with me to the book of Ruth. And I know that this is single in the city weekend, and uh, I know that you've got uh, uh, plans and other things that you want to do tonight, and we're not going to be here very long. Um, but There are some things that God would have for us to understand and for me to share with you tonight um, from the book of Ruth. How many of you have ever been in relationship with a bozo, just a clown? Amen. 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 I'm talking about somebody that just gets on every one of your nerves. You know what I'm talking about? I want to share with you tonight how to find a Boaz instead of a Bozo. Amen. Amen. Ruth chapter number four. Ruth chapter number four. And uh, I just want to read a few verses from the New International Version. And they might have uh, some uh, scriptures on the screen there. Uh, beginning in verse number 13. Ruth chapter number four. Beginning in verse number 13. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. Then he went to her and the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. The woman said to Naomi, praise be to the Lord who this day has not left you without a kinsman redeemer. May you become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons has given him birth. Then Naomi took the child, laid him in her lap, and cared for him. The woman living there said, Naomi has a son, and they named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. This, then, is the family line of Perez. Perez was the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Amenadab, Amenadab the father of Nashon, Nashon the father of Salmon, Salmon the father of Boaz, Boaz the father of Obed, and Obed the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of of David. Would you just grab uh, somebody next to you and grab their hand really tightly tonight? Because I think you're holding the hand of somebody that can identify with going through a failed or frustrated relationship. Maybe it was a friendship, maybe it was a dating courtship kind of thing. Uh, but I think everybody in this room knows what it's like to be disappointed and if it hadn't happened to you just keep on living just, just keep on living I don't want to spoil it for you I don't want to but just, just keep living just keep living but I'm so glad that God gives us a word and gives us instruction about how to navigate our lives in such a way that we can take our lives off a repeat amen amen Squeeze that hand tight as we, as we go to God in prayer. Father, I thank you for uh, this weekend. And I thank you, God, for those that are here tonight. And I thank you, God, that you brought us here for a common reason, because you have a purpose and plan for our life. You know the roads that we need to take. That's why your word says the steps of a good man and a good woman are ordered by you. And so, Father, I pray that you'd open the hearts and minds of your people on tonight. We thank you for the pain in our past, but we thank you that you've got a Boaz or a Ruth in all of our futures. And so, God, we're not here under the presupposition that everybody has to get married at a certain time or that marriage defines an individual. We just know that you've got some things so special in store for your people. And we want to follow the path towards that and leave the path of heartache and heartbreak and disappointment and devastation and so father i pray that you would anoint this time i pray that your holy spirit would continue to move in this place i pray that your hand would even fall afresh upon me and i pray god that your word would go forth with power in such a way god that people's dating people's relationships people's living would radically be changed you did it for ruth now do it for us in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said amen. 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 I want to give you um, a couple of disclaimers up front. Um, 
as I have uh, been in prayer uh, long before we began to advertise and to share uh, the plans for Single in the City Weekend, uh, months and months and months ago, God laid this upon my heart and gave me the assignment. And so I need you to understand tonight that I, I didn't really come to preach to you. Um, uh, if that's what you're looking for, uh, we have uh, three services on Sunday, two services during the week. Uh, I'm on the Steve Harvey Morning Show every day, uh, Monday through Friday at least. Uh, and so there are plenty of opportunities. Our website is full uh, of things that you can download, and our bookstore is there. Uh, but I'm really not here in that spirit on tonight. Uh, I I'm, here, I'm here for you because long before you knew that you'd be here, the Lord shared with me that you'd be here. Uh, and months and months and months ago, uh, the Lord placed this upon my spirit to share with you uh, on tonight, how to find a Boaz instead of a Bozo. And I'm really here um, with some very specific spiritual uh, directions and, and guidance because the truth of the matter is I, I'm going to leave this place tonight and I'm going to go back to my wife. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to go back and um, she might have a good meal waiting on me and and our arms and all that stuff will be open. Amen. Uh, we may even worship a little bit later tonight. Amen. You catch that on your way home. Amen. 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 That's a whole nother series, a whole nother sermon, a whole nother time of teaching. But the point is, I'm here tonight to share some very specific things that the Lord would have for you to receive uh, and I'm here to share them with you out of, out of not only my pastoral anointing, not, out of not just the anointing that's on my life, but, but I'm here to share these things with you out of the past lessons from the pain um, that I've experienced when I was single uh, and that many uh, other individuals that I meet with and, con and, and counsel and give guidance to that they've experienced. I don't know if you are willing to admit it, and I really need to just kind of be down on the floor because that's how informal uh, I want to be tonight. Uh, you, you might know the people sitting around you, in front of you, or behind you. You might not. And some of us, when we get in church settings, we get you know, so formal that we don't want anybody to know that we've ever gone through anything and we've ever struggled. But, but maybe you can't admit it, and since, and since you all are single and I'm not married, I, I can say this to you. I made a lot of mistakes when I was a single person. I made a lot of mistakes, largely because I wish I had an individual like a Pastor Van to share uh, with me when I was sitting where you were sitting. I, I wish. As a matter of fact, uh, my new book that I'm working on right now is about relationships. And I opened that book uh, talking about the fact that when, when I was single and when I was trying to understand how to navigate my way through uh, the treachery, amen, um, that comes with uh, bozos and, and, and other treacherous individuals, uh, there w weren't really a lot of things out there for me to read that would help me understand how God wanted me to handle it. I mean, I read stuff like, you know, uh, men and women are like buses. You know, they come every three or four or five minutes. I read, I read all of that, you know. I kiss dating goodbye. I read, I read all of that stuff. Um, but, but have you ever been in a situation where, where you really honestly, desperately just want God to show you how to handle it? I mean, can I talk to some honest singles that have been in some stuff with some crazy folk, whether they're male or female? And you spend some time when nobody else probably knows that you're agonizing about it. Maybe it's late at night or maybe it's early in the morning. And your question is, God, what in the world is going on? What do I need to do? And how do I really need to handle this thing called just being single? Am I talking to anybody tonight? Okay. And one of the things that I found out through that period is that the greatest book ever written on relationships is not an E. Lynn Harris book. It's not a Terry McMillan book. The greatest book on relationships is the Word of God. The greatest book on relationships is the Word of God because, number one, God instituted relationships. God was the one that formed and crafted the first relationship. God created Adam and he created Eve. God is the manufacturer of relationships. And normally when our cars uh, start acting up or when there are issues with our cars, if there's a 